Genesis 1, we're going to look at verses 14 through 25. And I'm going to elaborate some on points that's already been shared with through preaching. Created for God's glory. And say created for God's glory is what Dr. Dave been teaching us. What, one of the things I, I, I like when I study the Bible, I, I try to discipline, my, uh, discipline myself to stay in flow with the author who wrote the book. <laughs> I, I try to get into his style of writing, how he put his book together, and keep out my subjective thinking, bringing things to the text that the author did out in teen. I, I just want to know, when, when you put this together, what, what was in his head? What was his goal? What were he trying to get us to learn about God? So, so, and we take a little short journey through the six days of creation. We see what I call two triads. I, you got them, I, I give you a handout. Now, that's in small print. <laughs> one of my gifts is, is a gift of teaching, and you have a gift of teaching. Anybody have a gift of teaching? You know, we're deal real detailed. Because I have a tendency to, to try to keep a balance between preaching and, and teaching, and then sometimes the teaching side wins. And so you get a sheet like that with a whole lot of information. <laughs> but I hope, I hope it benefits you and, and uh and we share some today. Two triads. Number one, uh, days one through three. One through three. God formed creation on those days. Say God formed creation. God formed creation. Days four through six, he filled and then he finished creation. In other words, God created the frame and then he furnished the universe, like Dr. Day was saying. <laughs> Isaiah 45 in verse 18, he says, God did not create it empty. He formed it to be inhabited. I, I am the Lord and there is no other. God said he, he created the heavens and the earth, and he didn't leave them empty. He wanted things to live in them. It, it's an amazing symmetry. For instance, day one is, is about light. Then day four, God gives the sun, the moon, and the stars. You see how God fill that in? Day two, you got the sea and the sky. Day five, God filled it with fish and birds. Day three is earth. Day six, God create creatures of the land. Go, go back to verse one and we we'll read that the earth, the earth was without form and void. Now, we, 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 we can see how the Lord addressed it. You ready? This formlessness on days one through three, he filled the emptiness on days four through six. <laughs> Here's the main idea. God forms and fills his creation for his glory and our good. Okay, look at your neighbor and say, God forms and fills his creation for his glory and our good. Hallelujah. Some, some. 19 verse 1 says, the heavens declares the glory of God and the sky 
above proclaims his handiwork. Psalm 150 verse 1 says, praise him in the highest heavens. Somebody as well said, man's chief end is to glorify God and enjoy him forever. Mm-hmm. Yeah, we consider how creation gives glory to God. I'm, I'm humbled to be part of a church that has always embraced the inerrancy and the authority of Scripture. For we believe in the Genesis account of creation. And that is to be accepted literally and not allegorically or figuratively, figuratively, that man was created in innocence in God's own image and after God's own likeness. That man's creation was not a matter of evolution. That all animals and vegetable life was made directly and God established law was that they should bring forth after their own can. After their own can. Let's give God glory and enjoy him now as we submit to the scriptures. You notice having created light, say light, that's singular on the first day. Now God creates lights, plural, on the fourth day. The fourth day is Chapter 1, verses 4 through 19, as as you have. But uh, I'm not going to read that, but I want to pull out this phrase. Let there be lights. Plural. It indicates that this is a new creative act of Elohim, God. When God says it, that settles it. You remember Moses, he, he, he avoided using the words sun and moon because the sun and moon were considered gods in Egypt. Just watch how the guy writes. De- Deuteronomy 4.19 the Bible says, and beware lest you raise your eyes to heaven. And when you see the sun and the moon and the stars, all the hosts of heaven, you'll be drawn away and bow down to them and serve them. Moses says, God alone is king. Over his creation. Okay, I, I, I'll make a point in a minute, but I, I got to emphasize this. God alone is king over his creation. Oh, oh, okay. <laughs> what am I getting ready to say? I'm going to blow your mind. The sun in the sky today is the same sun God created back in Genesis. as steady and predictable as the sun appears. I find it fascinating how God chose to show his sovereignty over the sun on various occasions. Joshua 10, verses 12 through 14, God made the sun, God made the sun stand still for an entire day. So the Israelites had more time to win the battle. 2 Kings 20, verses 8 through 11. God turned back the shadow of the sun 
on a, on a sundial as a sign to show Hezekiah he will be healed and live additional 15 years. Luke, Luke, Luke 23 and 44. The sun went dark for three hours while Jesus absorbed mm, the sins on the cross. According to Revelation 6 and 12, during the great tribulation, the sun will be as black as sackcloth and the full moon will become like blood. Everything God created had a function. I'm look at, I want you to look at the four roles for the sun, the moon, and the stars, according to this passage. One, one is separation. To separate the day from the night. See that? The other one is signs. A, a sign was in what we call an awe-inspiring event a mark, or a miracle. Every time we gaze upon the heavens, we are seeing a dazzling display of God's glory. And when we see that heavenly luminaries, we can't help but give glory to the Lord of heaven and of earth. The fourth one is, or the third one is seasons. The orbit of the, of the earth around the sun determines the length of our years, providing seasons for sowing and seasons for harvest. God in his glory has ordained the sun and the moon to provide measures of time which mark off days and years. What kind of God is that, man? And, and these cycles are, are daily reminders of God's provisions. We, we, we see it, his, his daily provision and his presence. We see it, his mercies are new when? Every morning, help me, somebody. <laughs> they are new every morning. Say every morning. Oh, man, somebody told us, say hallelujah. <laughs> some, some 81 and about verse 3 says, blow the trumpet at the new moon, at the full moon, and on our feast days, seasons. The fourth one is, is, is shining. Find it in verse 15. These luminaries give light upon the earth. It, it's interesting how, watch, watch this. I, I, I try to stay with the, with the writer, kind of see what he, he's trying to do, or what, what, what he's doing. I'm trying to understand it. <laughs> <He's saying laughs> It's interesting how the greater and the lesser lights get most of the attention in these verses. You get that? Almost as an afterthought, we read this, and the sun. Like it's a little afterthought and the sun. You, you know, our, our galaxy alone, just our galaxy, has 200 billion stars, and there are billions of galaxies. They, they can't even count them all, much less name them. But watch our God. Isaiah 40 and 26 tell us God notices and names each one because he created them. He says, lift up your eyes on high and see who created these. He who brings out their host by number, calling them all by name by the greatness of his might and because he is strong in power, no one is missing. 
you, you've been hearing me say God, God name. Say God name. That's how you know God is sovereign. Because in Hebrew culture, culture, when you name the thing, you ran it. You were Lord over it. So God was naming them. You, you don't see man naming nothing until later. And Adam began to give animals what? Names to show his dominion over the animals. <laughs> oh, you, you, you see out the wild, that's, that's, that's one reason why, why God wouldn't let Moses give, give him no name. Uh, you, you, you can't put me in a box. Did you, I'll tell you what. Just, just go and tell him I am that I am sent you. I don't have a name. I'm everything. <laughs> oh, man. Y'all okay, going to get me out of track. Oh, but here's the point I want to make about them stars. Okay. Some, some of us going to have to repent. <laughs> Stars don't rule over our lives. Only God does. The sun, the moon, the stars are not divine gods. Oh. <laughs> Horoscope <laughs> helps. I know I know had to walk real sorry right there, but like some of y'all read the read the horoscope before you read the Bible. And and and, 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 and if you've been consulting your horoscope, you, you should be horrified by that and stop. It's time to repent and seek only the holy God for his leading. He alone holds your future. How can stars in the sky have any clue what's in store for you? How can stars in the sky have any clue? Don't have any. How much better to follow the creator of the stars than inanimate stars themselves? We we, 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 we just like our forefathers before us. We, we worship the sun and the moon instead of worshiping the creator of the sun, the moon, and the stars. Having said that, since God made the stars, amen, he has used them as signs before, as he did uh, for the astrologers who followed the star of the Christ in Matthew 2, verses 9 through 10. In Scripture, the sun is repeatedly used as a symbol of Jesus Christ, star. Malachi 4. Two says, but, but for you who fear my name, the son of righteousness shall rise with healing in his wings. Talking about Jesus. God, God forms, listen to me, God forms and fills his creation for his glory and your good. And not for the stars to get no glory. Day five. God formed the seas and the skies on, on the second day, and now he, he fills the, the, the seas and the skies with, with fish and fowl. You see that in verses 20 to 23? But then God told me, he said, now, be, watch, you say, be, verse 22, be fruitful. And multiply, fill the waters in the seas, and let the birds multiply on the earth. 
Y'all see that? The command for the waters was swarm with living creatures. You know, those swift moving back and forth, they, they team and multiply kind of fish. This, this untold number of moving creatures who, who are swimming and swarming. as stated in Ezekiel 47 and 9 when Ezekiel says, Every living creature that swarms will live, and there will be very many fish. Verse 21, God says, He created the great sea creatures. Great sea creatures. Which, which y'all know that include dinosaurs, right? Y'all say, dinosaurs live? Yeah, they live. Okay, uh, read, read Job 7 and 12 sometime, and you, you, you'll see they deal. It is especially significant for the Israelites to hear God created the sea creatures because their pagan neighbors worship Rahab, the mystical sea monster. Some. 148 and 7 tells us these creatures create a chorus of praise to the Creator. Praise the Lord from the earth, you great sea creatures in all deeps. He said, he said even, even the creatures in the land, creatures in the sea, creatures in the, si in the sky are to give God glory. God, as many as the stars there are, as the fish in, in the sea there is, God controls them all. <laughs> Say God control them all. He tell them, fish, go, 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 go swallow up Jonah. What the fish do? Went and got it. What, what do you do? Jesus says to the wind and the waves, peace, be still. What do they do? You, you know why? Because he's Lord of heaven and earth and everything in them. Oh, y'all missed it. He says, be fruitful. Multiply. Fill the waters. Fill them. God created all of this beauty, this diversity, color, and movement for his pleasure, for his glory, and for our good. He created the heavens and the earth as an arena to display his glory and populate it with diversity on purpose for his purposes. Mm -mm -mm. Psalm, Psalm 104 verses 24 and 25 says, O Lord, how manifold are your works in wisdom you have, you, you, have you made them all? The earth is full of your creatures. Here is the sea, great and wide, which teems with creatures, immeasurable, living things, both small and great. Verse 22 tells us in Genesis, the first instance, watch it, the first instance, the first instance, verse 22, of God blessing what he created. I got, I got to pause right there and go real slow. Uh, just, just, just watch the author how he writes. In verse 22, it's the first time in the first instance of God blessing what he created. Blessing is used 88 times in various forms in Genesis, more than any other book in the Old Testament. One commentator says the book of Genesis ends with an abundant burst of blessing in Jacob's parting words. It's interesting that the first blessing 
is not for humans. But for whales and blue jays. <laughs> the word bless means to enrich, to endow, bless, to, to salute on bended knee. Blessing is linked to the ability to multiply, y'all, to multiply and reproduce. Watch this. He say, be fruitful and multiply and feel. The author is real intentional about the words that he used. He says, be fruitful and multiply and feel. We, 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 we see this in, in, in the blessing God gave to humans in Genesis 1.28. And God blessed them and said to them, be fruitful and multiply and fill the earth. The creator God wants his creation to do three things. You ready? To be fruitful, to flourish, and to feel what he has formed. That, that fruitfulness comes from divine decree, not, not from some pagan cultic fertile ritual. Since God is blessed by what he has birthed, he blesses his creation so it will give birth and multiply. That's what one of the things the writer of the book of Genesis is trying to get us to understand something about God. He's saying God is blessed by his birthing of creation. He blesses creation so that it will give birth and multiply. In other words, God saying, I'm, I'm creating all of this, but you can't keep it to yourself. Oh, help me, somebody. I'll be there in a minute. I know I'm putting you to sleep right now. But he said, <laughs> having said that, let me tell you something. It, it doesn't mean you are not blessed if you are single or struggle with infertility. Give some insight. You, that, that first des designation of his blessing is in the realm of birds, marine life. What's fascinating is that they've already been, watch this, I'm, they've already been pronounced good. God said they are good. Verse 21. So the reader's meant to, watch this, the reader, that's you and I, are meant to understand blessed as a state beyond good. <laughs> Blessing is a good upon good. Mm. Not the kind of like moving past the threshold of good into uncharted territory of unimaginable abundance. Understanding how the blessing of God is meted out throughout Genesis causes a proper image of him to emerge. It is a God who loves vast fullness. He's a God who channeled in the most wondrous and productive way. He is also, he delights in bestowing that blessing upon the most unlikely of people against the most troublesome odds. Here's the principle. If you don't get anything else to say the rest of the day, you need to get this one. The writer is trying to get us to see 
that God blesses us so we can be a blessing to others. Oh, I know you still don't blame me. So, I, so he says, Paul says, Blessed be the God and Father of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ, the Father of compassion and the God of all comfort, who, who comfort us in our time of trouble so that with the comfort we receive, we may comfort others. <laughs> I know some of y'all think God just comforted you because of you. You know, he, he comforted you for somebody else so you can pour it into somebody else. God said, I, 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 I want you to be fruitful. I want you to flourish, and I want you to feel what I have formed. God says, I, I, in, in, in Genesis, remember Genesis 12 and 2, when God blessed Abraham or Abram, God says, I, I tell you what, I, I'm going to bless you so you, you'll be a blessing to the, to the world. He said, I will bless you and make your name great so you will be a blessing. And from that point on, you, you study Abraham's life. Everybody Abraham rubbed shoulders with either was a blessing or a curse. When, when, when he had Sarah the lion say she was his sister. The king was so upset, he said, man, what are you trying to do to me, get me killed? Because God cursed him. We, God created us to be a blessing and not a curse to people. You, you know what I, I, I used to tell my enemies? I, I kind of stopped. When they do stuff to me, viciously try to hurt me, I will remind them, I'll tell you, I am an Old Testament Christian. God will bless those who bless me. <laughs> and God will curse those who curse me. And I believe that too. That's the New Testament. Vengeance belongs to the Lord, not to you. That's the same principle. But God, be careful how we treat people. God created us to be a blessing to people and not a curse. He blessed us not to keep it to ourselves, but to share it with other folk. Amen. Okay, day six, day six. Y'all ready for day six? Listen now to. to the verses 24 following. Watch the phrase. According to its kind. According to their kinds. It's used 10 times in Genesis chapter 1. The author is doing that, trying to make a point. He's trying to drive something home. To indicate that there are separate species and genders which are distinct and different. In other words, he's saying God established categories of creation. In addition, the word separate is used five times in the first chapter, which means to set apart. This is a word of distinction and differentiation. That, that's why squirrels always give birth to what? Squirrels. And not the sheep. <laughs> Somebody says that the great architect talking about God, the great architect of the universe. I just love this quote. The great architect of the universe does not permit the colors of his canvas to run together. Let me, let me say it again. So there was some static. The great architect of the universe does not permit the colors of his canvas to run together. <laughs> oh, man, that, that, that become real relevant as, as I reflect on our cultural situation. Here, here's, here's a sentence I wrote down. Because creation distinctions have now become fluid, we slip back into dark chaos, leaving us formless and unfulfilled, where we don't know whether we are male or female or female or male. Mm. We've lost God's order of things. I'll talk about that tonight when I talk about Adam. 
But, but can, I, can, I, can I just intrigue you for a moment before I, I make my last point? You, you, you know, it never dawned on me how much God's heart was crushed by Adam's deliberate rebellion and Eve being deceived. There's a difference. Adam was blatantly disobedient. God told him exactly. Yeah. 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 Eve was deceived, yeah. which means the devil told her some truth, but not all the truth. And before she realized that he didn't give her all the truth, she was already ensnared. That's what deception is. But Adam just rebelled, broke God's heart. You, 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 you know, can you imagine being born to your mother? And she called you by name one time and never called your name again because you hurt her. God never mentioned Adam's name again. You, you know, all the Old Testament hears God never mentioned his name. You, you hear about him in the New Testament about what he did, but God never called his name again. Ponder on that. And yet that's, that's, that's what every, every boy, every girl need is for their daddy to call their name. God looked and Jesus says, this is my beloved son. Whom <laughs> I well pleased. He never said that about Adam. It's not because God isn't merciful. For God is merciful. You, you, you know, you know the first thing God did when Adam and Eve tried to put together leaves to cover themselves up. It didn't work. God killed an animal, took his skin, and covered them. That's a reflection of the cross. Blood has to be shed in order for our sins to be covered. And so from that point on, you had all these animal sacrifices because God was the first one to shed blood of an animal to cover his children. God gave his son up to cover our sin. Man, that would make me jump out this chair if I could. You know, God loves us. My last point for real. Since God cares for his creation, trust him to take care of you when you are struggling. Matthew 6, watch Jesus, he picks it up. Matthew 6, verses 25 through 26, he says, Therefore I tell you, do not be anxious about your life, what you will eat, what you will drink, or about your body, what you're going to put on. Is not your life more than food and the body more than clothing? Look at the birds <laughs> of the air. He says, when, when, when you feel like things not going right and you can't handle it anymore, you start worrying. He says, lift your head up and watch the birds. God give them food every day. They'll they, 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 they fly around your car when it's parked. 
and pluck the dead bugs off your car. God provides. He, say, he says, look, look at them. They, they don't sow, they don't reap, they don't gather in the barn yet. He said, yet your heavenly father feeds them. Are you, are you not of more value than they? And the answer is yes. So, when you lose sight of life, you, you don't feel like reading no scripture. You don't feel like praying. Take a deep breath and look at all of God's creation because his creation reminds you that I'll never leave you. I'll never forsake you. I got you back. So, in Romans, the Gentiles were saying, you know, we, 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 we got an excuse for not trusting God. Paul said, well, you know, Gentiles, you, you, you are without excuse. excuse. He says, all you had to do was look at creation and you would have seen that there is one true God because creation attests to the fact that there is one sovereign God. He says to the Jews in the same text, he says, you, you are without excuse because y'all had the law. So he says to the Jews and the Gentiles, all of y'all are out with excuse. God make himself known through any means. All his creation because he is God. And we're not. I'm through. He's God. We're not. Go home and go to sleep. <laughs> and stay out of God's business. He got your back. Amen. <laughs> it is our prayer that the service that you just participated in blessed your life. And there was something in there that was spiritually designed to change your life, to pivot your life, to alter your life, to look more towards God and to have more purpose in life that only can be fulfilled through Jesus Christ. Now, there's one more step that you can take to be a part of the family of God here at Oak Garden. We would love, even though you're online, doesn't mean that the distance has to separate us. It's an opportunity for us to get to know you better. And all you have to do is connect with us by texting 972-372-9520 and texting the word new member, new member. And once you do that, guess what? We will gladly uh, reciprocate that message and call you and reach out and see how we can do life with you better. With the advent of technology, guess what? Distance has no distance that we cannot fulfill through the Spirit of God. So we would love for you to join our virtual audience and be a faithful member in our cyber worship experience and get to know Old Gardens while you do life together in your own territory. May God bless you and keep you is our prayer.